Island Sports Media Warrior Recap with Pu'u Kani. Meanwhile, and Shakas, it's me, Pu'u Kani of Pipeline in Paradise Radio, reporting for IslandSportsMedia.com, your ultimate island style sports magazine. Homecoming week as well as Halloween weekend brought out fans and supporters of all shapes and sizes to the Aloha Stadium. The 6 and 2 Hawaii Warriors welcome the 4 and 3 Vandals of Idaho. Hawaii looking to win their ninth straight homecoming game, a win that would make them bowl eligible for the seventh time in nine years. On a weekend where spirits were high, the Warriors called upon higher powers for a big victory. Idaho won the coin toss and elected to receive, and the Vandals wasted no time making their way down the field. Senior quarterback Nathan Enderley led the nation's fourth-rated passing offense down the field, connecting with tight end Daniel Hardy for 19 yards. He also hit wide receiver Justin Belting for 21 yards. The Vandals mixed in the running efforts of senior running back Deontay Jackson, and 11 plays and 73 yards later, the Vandals drew first blood, connecting on a 35-yard field goal. Idaho 3, Hawaii 0. Hawaii went 3 and out on their first possession, but on their next drive, kicker Scott Enos tied it up with a 34-yard field goal. Five minutes, 30 seconds left in the first. It was knotted up at three apiece. During its five-game win streak, the UH defense had 12 interceptions, and with just over two minutes left in the first, Hawaii's Mano Silva recorded lucky interception number 13. Hawaii quickly capitalized, showing why they are the nation's top passing offense, as quarterback Bryant Muniz found junior wide receiver Royce Pollard twice, including a 10-yard touchdown strike. At the close of the first, it was Hawaii 10, Idaho 3. Second quarter action, Idaho tried to pass their way down the field and that proved to be a wrong move as Hawaii's defense again stepped up big time as linebacker Corey Paredes handed quarterback Enderley his second INT of the night, number 14 for the Warriors in the last 10 quarters. This time, quarterback Muniz went to one of his favorite weapons, finding slot receiver Kealoha Pilaris twice through the air, including the quick toss from four yards out and the TD. Momentum drastically changed since the opening drive it was Hawaii 17, Idaho 3. Battle of the Hardy Boys came to life as Hawaii's freshman cornerback John Hardy Tuliao met head-on with Idaho's senior tight end Daniel Hardy. Hawaii's Hardy Tuliao won the battle as he knocked the ball loose, picked up by junior safety Richard Torres, taking it for 57 yards and the touchdown. Just like that, it was Hawaii 24, Idaho 3. But Hawaii was not done yet in the first as junior defensive lineman Liko Satele blocked the 26-yard field goal, giving Hawaii an opportunity to kick one from 49 yards out, but their attempt failed also. On their next possession, quarterback Muniz hooked up with his All-American wide receiver, Greg Salas, for a huge 38-yard completion, taking it down to the one-yard line. Very next play, the reigning WAC Offensive Player of the Week, running back Alex Green, plunged it in from one yard out. At halftime, it was Hawaii 31, Idaho 3. The fans at Aloha Stadium had a lot to cheer about, not only because of the halftime score, but because of the homecoming entertainment. Festivities took over over during halftime, and that gave fans more fuel for another big half to come. Hawaii opened up the third, passing their way quickly down the field as quarterback Muniz found slot receiver Dustin Blunt twice, one from 11, the other from 12. Unfortunately, Muniz also found Idaho's defensive end Aaron Lavarius on a first and goal, halting their threat to score on their opening drive of the second half. Warriors special teams then forced a turnover as Hardy Tuliao recovered a fumbled punt return by the Vandals' Shiloh Kill. Five plays later, number six scored six as Muniz connected with Dustin Blunt for the 16-yard touchdown. At the end of three, it was the Warriors 38, Vandals 3. Hawaii's offense continued to dominate as quarterback Muniz and wide receiver Salas connected on five passes on their next drive. That resulted in a three-yard touchdown from Muniz himself, giving the Warriors a 45-3 lead. On the night, Salas recorded 11 catches for 168 yards, keeping him amongst the top in the nation for receiving yards and catches per game. Vandals did find the end zone on the night as backup quarterback Brian Reeder found redshirt freshman Taylor Elmo for 18 yards and the TD, but that's where the score locked in and became official. The final score on homecoming night, it was Hawaii 45, Idaho 10. The Warriors and their fans had great reason to celebrate as Hawaii moved on to 7-2 overall, 5-0 in conference play. After the game, Big Wave Dave had a chance to speak with the victorious Warriors, including many of their defensive standouts. Switch it on that fumble return. It reminded me of being the quarterback at Kahuku. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a great feeling, you know, running and seeing open field and just being in the end zone, you know, nothing feels, nothing feels any better than that, you know, just just grateful that the play came my way and I was fortunate enough to make it, you know, I'm a little scared when
when they tried to replay, I was like, oh no, don't tell me it didn't count, you know, but when it counted, I was, I was really happy. Within the last few weeks, the guys on the defensive line have been coming up, batting down the ball, just uh, giving pressure to the opposing offense. What's some of the keys that you guys been focusing on in the last few weeks? I'm just working on, you know, reading their stance, reading their set, pan, their set stance, um, you know, just where they're going to set you off the ball, and then from there, cause we got to be react, we got to react to them. They're making their first move, and uh, we're just counter punches. Oh, you and Kaniela have been just creating havoc for the opposing team's offensive line. What's some of the things that you've been focusing on in the last few weeks on the defensive line? I mean, just playing hard. We really don't have that much to do. We go left, we go right, we go straight. That's about it. Coach really emphasizes this kicking butt, and, and I think Kaniela is a good example of that he is. Uh, me and him feed off each other, and we, we play hard. But I think D line wise, I think as a unit, we've continued to play together each week. We had moments here and there where we weren't playing together, but uh, I think overall tonight we came away with a pretty good performance. In the last few weeks, this team been focused. I mean, week by week, you guys just focus on game by game. You know, you, you guys weren't looking forward to Boise. Yeah. What's been keeping you guys focused as far as not looking too far ahead? We've seen it before where we looked ahead and it is, it's gone against us, but we just knew that with the two losses early in the season, every game is going to be important and uh, we wanted some respect so to get respect we got to give respect so we respected all these guys we respected Idaho because uh, we knew they had some weapons on offense and we knew they had guys on defense that fly around but I think the whole aspect of giving respect to getting respect I think that's what we tried to do and um, I think that's what kept us grounded. Prior to today the Idaho quarterback was solid against one of the top five quarterbacks as far as NFL prospects in the nation. What did you guys do to prepare for the Idaho pass? First off we had to put him in a Passing situation, so we had to stop the run, uh, stop the run early, and then put them in passing situations. And everyone had to respect their responsibility, and we had to carry our responsibility for the defense to work. You know, within the last three or four games, you guys just been coming up with interceptions. You, JB, Corey. So it's what we're seeing now. All of the uh, alignment and, and assignment that you guys have been uh, working on since the spring. You know, we're, we're taking our, our defense to so another level. You know, we're opportunistic. You know, we're making plays and breaking on balls and, and getting interceptions and just correlating with what our W. Uh, come at the end of the game, so you know, it's, it's been great. Tell us something that's been keeping this team focused and not thinking too far ahead to play this league. We understand that we can't get too ahead of ourselves. We can't, we have to use kind of humility. With you know, we talk about it all the time in chapel with guys that pat you on the back. You know, you got to learn that humility and um, you got to not get intoxicated with the pats on the back and everybody telling you you're doing such a good job. And you have to remember that you can be touched any given Saturday, anybody can lose. And uh, we try to remember that every time we touch the field. That yeah, we got a tight unit of, on the DBs and a, and a great linebacking core and D-line and so forth, but the minute we're not humble, we know that we can be touched. This team is different than any other team I played on because we have a lot of love for each other, so you don't want to be the one to let your brother down, you know what I mean? You don't want to be the one to make that mistake, to make a selfish mistake, to make an error or to be affected by the weather, and you let 10 other guys down and, and you just feel bad. And I think, you know, just us loving each other and always hanging out with each other, you know, I think that that's really the key. Big way also spoke with two of their offensive leaders. What's well, going to your mind as far as this being the last trip that this Hawaii team may be taking to the Hawaii uh, I think that this should be the two tests for us as a team because um, it will hit us in every aspect of the game, you know, offense, defense, special teams. And it'll show how really good we are with a top five team. This is going to be a big challenge for us and uh, we just need to push through the obstacles that we have ahead of us. You know, from the beginning of the season, a lot of people questioned you for but you guys came through. What are some of the things that you may uh, be telling your teammates as far as people for this game, which probably may be the biggest game of the season. We already know that coming into the season, everyone down in the offensive line, and it's always like that. So there was no problem with that. But what we built off season was the chemistry between starting five and, and the second team, because that's where the game is won. You know, it's because of that chemistry that we built, we kind of have an understanding of what we need to do for the next game, and we just take it one game at a time. Uh, we definitely don't look, overlook any of our teams. Every week we see the other team as presenting a challenge to us, and uh, we just answer that challenge. Like going into this week, everybody's talking about boys. We didn't even think about points. We knew we had to go through Idaho to get to Boise. Also, after the conclusion of the game, UH, now with seven wins, accepted an invitation to play in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl scheduled on Christmas Eve. This was the earliest the program has ever secured a bowl bid. So the big stage is set as Hawaii heads to the infamous Blue Turf this coming Saturday to take on the nation's second-ranked team, Boise State. Both teams will enter the game undefeated in whack play. One will walk away with the same honor. Without a doubt, this will be one of the Hawaii Warriors' biggest games in program history. Kickoff scheduled for 9.30 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Go Hawaii!
Hawaii Warriors. Big mahalo to photographers Mike Sullivan and Glenn Yoza for capturing the sights and sounds on homecoming night. I'm Pu'u Kani for Pipeline Paradise Radio, reporting for IslandSportsMedia.com, your ultimate island-style sports magazine. Island Sports Media, Warrior Recap.